Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this game-like training educational video. Today what we're going to cover is we're going to cover how you can create an effective training to learn environment for your students when using golf technology. We're going to use this video as an example of how you can induce deeper learning through injecting spacing, variability and challenge into your students' practice. One of the key questions that as coaches we should ask ourselves, or even better, empower our students to ask themselves when they turn up to practice, is are they training to learn or training to perform? So today's video is heavily focused on training to learn and we're gonna be using the K-Motion technology as an example of how we can create an effective environment to help students retain changes to their golf swing. So we can see here that Sean is just finishing the acclimatization process. This is him really getting used to hitting balls in the K-Motion. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the learning environment. We don't want Sean to just rake and hit balls while he's being assessed. So as you can see, I moved the bucket of balls and we've changed Sean's club. So changing the club adds variability and then moving the bucket of balls adds spacing. So we can see now Sean has changed his club. Again, variability. Now he's got to walk and get his ball. Spacing. This is very representative of the environment we would have on the golf course. So we're capturing data here for Sean's six iron, but we're not just letting him rake and hit balls. If he was just in the same environment as when he was getting acclimatized to the, to the K-Motion equipment, just rake, hit, rake, hit, very little space between each shot, very little variability, and therefore very low challenge. So the data that you'll get is probably better than Sean would actually produce. The spacing between each shot, the variability of hitting different clubs, now increases the challenge point. So we're more likely to see Sean's tendencies come through. And now, once we've completed that, so Sean hit six, six irons uh, with a driver interleaved between each one and obviously had the walk we got the data analyzed by uh, K-Motion expert, Ryan Petty. So after analyzing the data, uh, K-Motion expert, Ryan Petty decided that the lowest hanging fruit, the, the area for development that would have the biggest impact on Sean's kinematic sequence and help him drive a more desired golf motion was his pelvis. But before I design the training to learn circuit that Sean is going to engage in, that will help him not only understand what he has to change in his swing, but how he can practice it to actually retain the movements over time, Ryan wanted to do a physical competency test. All too often, golfers are trying to change their swing but they don't actually have the physical capability to get in those positions. So Ryan is helping Sean get in those positions, see if he's capable of it. And Ryan's also recommended a couple of correctional exercises for Sean that then I would implement into his training to learn circuit. So this is the final part of the process. There was the acclimatization process, the assessment process, then looking at how the pelvis moved, and now what we're doing is we're about to enter the training to learn circuit. Yep. So here we can see this is station one. So in the previous video, Sean is in station one. Five on each side. So here's his physical competency exercise. This is called uh, cats and dogs. And what he's really trying to do is get more uh, movement that is required in the golf swing into his pelvis. 
So he's using the K motion to give himself visual and audible feedback. Um, a lot of people would do this in the gym. I think it's a great thing to do this on the range and then begin to join the dots. So once he's finished working on this pelvis movement, uh, that K motion expert uh, Ryan Petty has got him doing, he's going to stand up and he's going to apply it to his golf swing. Sorry, not his golf swing, his golf posture. So here we go. And again, getting visual and audible feedback from the K motion. When Sean has completed this station, which he will do very soon, he'll move to station two. Uh, and at station two, we'll start to introduce the golf club uh, and the golf ball and we'll still allow him to have some feedback. So just finishing off. When Sean hears the ding, when he's in the correct position, it will be finished. And now on to station two. So at station two, um, Sean will be doing what Ryan has called the pelvic punch. So based on his assessment data, Ryan believes that this drill will really help Sean begin to change his uh, movement pattern. So what Sean will do, yeah. he'll make one pelvic punch move, getting feedback from the computer yeah. and from the, the K-Motion vest. So it went too far there, so you can see it on the feedback. So there we go, yeah, there we go. So one successful rep there, now we'll add the ball. Now with this one, I want you to hold it, remember? Hold it to the D, and then just bring it up here, yeah. And this is very early on um, in Sean's training. So he's only really had one round of this. So coach's feedback is still important. So Ryan's there to help him. But the goal of this circuit is actually Today, when Sean leaves, we want him to be able to complete this circuit on his own. And he'll take his K coach with him, and uh, he knows how to prep. This circuit is pre programmed in there, and he'll take it with him, and then the coach can get feedback of how he's practicing and training. So, there we go, real good drill there. That was a very successful uh, second rep. So, now the third rep starts with no ball. There you go, is it that position? We heard the feedback and then off we go. So now the idea is to make it as a quality rep. There we go. Very good, so that's an improvement from the first circuit. So now Sean is ready for station three. Uh, and in station three, what we're doing is we're doing sandwich training. So what Sean will do is he'll make a full golf swing with no golf ball and he will create the desired move that he wants from his pelvis and he'll get uh, visual and audio feedback on that there we go and now what he's gonna do is he's gonna try and avoid getting that beat he's gonna make his old move so this is the move that he doesn't want to make so there the, the, the visual of the K motion and the fact there was no beat, Sean knows that he made his old swing and now he's gonna go back and he's gonna make the improved pelvic motion. You can see it's a bit more strenuous for him, but over time, the old pelvis motion, the pelvic motion that he's trying to get rid of, will start to merge with the new one and the error will become less. Uh, that's one of the benefits of, of what they call sandwich training. Uh, and a lot of fine, yeah. a lot of sports that uh, need fine motor yeah. skills are good for this. So, so he's now um, doing speed variability testing. So what Ryan's done is Ryan's taken away um, the visual and audible feedback, and Sean is hitting shots, different speed swings, focused on the pelvis movement, and he's got to relay to Ryan how he feels the pelvis movement was. Yeah. So now we've taken away the feedback and he's having to guess at the data. First one's a 30, 
This is keeping him engaged in the movement. Um, and actually, it's also helping him ignore the strike of the golf ball. We're not interested in what the golf ball is doing. We're interested to see if at varying speeds, Sean can move his pelvis how Ryan wants him to. So Sean's been through station one, physical competency, the cats and dogs station, did 10 reps, uh, then worked on his posture. He then did some pelvic punch drills with visual feedback. He then did some sandwich training with visual feedback. We were then removed all the feedback and Sean did some speed variability. And now what he's got to do, he's got to hit a full shot to a target, full routine, just trying to connect the dots. Is he gonna have a swing thought? I don't know. Is he not? I don't know. Is he target orientated? We really don't know. But this is a more performance orientated shot. So once Sean has completed this one shot, it's a full routine. And I'm sure in his mind, he's trying to join the dots. This is very early on training to learn circuit. So again, not a good strike and Sean's a good ball striker. So that's, that's a positive for me. It means something's changed. So he can go over to Ryan, he can check out the data and then what will happen is he'll go through this whole circuit again. So we'll start with his physical competency station, work on his posture. Then he'll go pelvic punch with some visual feedback from the K motion. Then he'll go sandwich training with some visual feedback and audible feedback. Then all the feedback will get removed as he goes into the speed variability station. And then at station five, he gets one shot to try and join the dots. Now, as time progresses, these will become easier. Therefore, challenge point gets lower and we'll start to add a bit more of this in as he retains his movement patterns. So we'll start to shift the balance from training to learn over time, we'll start to move it to, we'll start to increase the training to perform elements as Sean starts to retain the movement patterns. Thank you for taking the time to engage in this game-like training educational video. Uh, I just wanna add three key points, three takeaways. Number one, Sean is a professional golfer. Therefore, in this learning circuit, there is high variability high spacing and high challenge. There's five stations and there's very low reps at each station. If you're working with a less proficient golfer or you are a less proficient golfer, you probably want lower spacing and lower variability to create optimal learning. So for example, if you're an 18 handicap golfer, you might only have two or three stations and you might hit a total of between six to eight balls at each station. The second key point is at some stage, we need to take away the feedback. We don't want players to come dependent on the technology or on a coach's input. So it's very important at some point that we take away the feedback. And finally, over time, it would be our goal to reduce the amount of training to learn tasks at the expense of increasing performance tasks. The rate at which we do this will be based on Sean's ability to practice effectively and change his motor pattern. And it will be the K coach that will provide this data and allow us to then enable Sean to move along what we would call the learning performance continuum. For more information on the learning performance continuum, check out Game Like Training's new book, Golf Practice, How to Make Swing Changes Stick and Transfer Your Range Game to the Golf Course. Thank you.